Today, I'm making what is considered to be a delicate triumph of French cooking. Welcome back to Jamie and Julia. Oh! <laughs> bon appétit. Into JC's Mastering the Art of French Cooking, Volume 1 we go. So we're gonna try this out today. It's a canal de poisson. Fish canal. Not quenel, canal. And if you're like me and wondering what that is, well, it is a delicate triumph of French cooking. <laughs> That's where I got that from. Uh, it's a mixture of pâte de choux, cream, and a puree of raw fish that is formed into ovals or cylinders and poached in a seasoned liquid. Served hot in a fine sauce, canals make a distinguished first course or luncheon dish. They are individual, small, independent mousses, really almost as light as a souffle, with just enough body to hold themselves in shape for poaching. That's beautiful. Now she's talking about a time BFP, before food processor. This would have been quite the laborious task to make and she goes into great detail how they used to make them. Times have changed thanks to that beautiful machine because canel and mousses take literally minutes and have stepped out of the never never land of ultra fancy food and into the everyday life of the average home cook. Let's make them. All right, let's start this off. Saucepan, I gotta make some pata choux, choux pastry. And I'm gonna be splitting the recipe in half today because it's calling for, uh, it says we're gonna make around 16 canals. I'm gonna, I have made pata choux many times on the show before. Uh, I get a little bit better at it each time, but also my success rate for making it is surprisingly high. So let's just keep the good times rolling. So what is this, half a cup of water. It's two tablespoons of butter and I need around half a teaspoon of salt. Bring that to a boil over here, and if you would be so kind to accompany me over to the stove top, let's make it. Water's boiling, butter's melted. I'm gonna turn off the heat and I'm gonna add in, recipe says a cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour, but I'm halving it, so that's six tablespoons. In it goes, all of it. And then we beat that together. Get that all incorporated. Hope everyone's okay out there. Get the heat back on. For a couple minutes, I just continue to cook this on a moderately high heat until it can form a mass. Well, it already can, but we're just gonna hold steady here for a second. We got a mass over here. Turn the heat off, back over here. All right, so in goes the egg whites. Wait, 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 wait. Off the heat, one by one, beat in the eggs. All right, so one by one. Crack in one egg, but beat this in quickly so nothing bad happens. Uh, don't slow down, don't slow down. I could tell that the egg was starting to cook a little bit. Just a little bit, so I had to act fast. Mission accomplished. Egg white from one egg. Also do the same thing, beat it really fast. I probably need to stop using this saucepan when I'm cooking up this pat de choux because it retains the heat much longer than any other saucepan. It's kinda cooked up some of the egg white that I didn't mix in in time. It's fine. Bring over, I got a bowl here of ice water. In it goes. And I'm just gonna remove the cooked egg white. That was an accident. Let's continue to beat. You know what, before I do that anymore, bowl me, thank you. I think what I'm gonna do is transfer the pat de choux into a separate bowl. So I took this pan from really hot and then I submerged it in really cold. You're not supposed to do that because it might warp it. So I'm just kind of transferring it to this bowl and now everything is great. Let's just keep this in here until we need to use it. We have halibut in the house. You need a fish, um, she's telling me, that is not too flimsy. He shoots, he scores. We're looking for a fish with lean, close grain flesh of a slightly gelatinous quality. Monkfish, or halibut, will do nicely. This is a really nice looking cut of fish. Holy. Yeah, kind of pricey, but you know, we're making French oat cuisine over here. So yeah, you gotta be prepared. And one pound, 3.6 ounces. Good catch. 
Uh, so I only need half of that. So if I was making the full recipe, this would be perfect as it's one and a quarter pounds. But, like I keep saying, I'm not doing that. Am I supposed to remove the skin? I'm, su I'm sure I'm supposed to. I mean, I have seen what these things look like online, so I I'm pretty sure I need to remove the skin. It has no mention. So we gotta cut the fish into one inch strips. Say so. All right, so bring over the old FP food processor. And I think we can all agree now that its name is Steve. Steve the food processor. Howdy. Uh, Steve the machine. Jeez. <laughs> So let's take the halibut strips and add them into Steve. So let's also take the chilled pata choux. Quarter teaspoon of salt and a one eighth teaspoon of white pepper. I guess we have to use our judgment for this next part. It says four to, two to four to six to eight or more tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. Please explain. We start with two, start with two. One, two, okay. We're gonna spin this sucker, 30 seconds or so. Woo, it smells. Woo, it smells like fish. So yeah, take the pizza spatula and we gotta scrape down the sides of the bowl. So if this mixture seems stiff, we blend in more cream. That is pretty damn stiff. A tablespoon more of heavy cream, whipping cream. And I gotta add as much cream as this thing's gonna take, but the mixture must hold its shape well in a mass on the spoon. Good to know. A little more cream wouldn't hurt anyone. Well, it hurts me, but let's try that. So that's what, been four tablespoons so far? Still very stiff. I see what she means. Now you just keep adding this until you can figure out what's right. Let's just do one more. I think that's gonna work for us today. Look, it holds the shape in a mass on a spoon. That was four or five tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. What the hell's going on here? To salt some water in, this goes into just barely simmering water. Poaching that for several minutes. Okay, not much in the looks department. This is just a test. I just gotta taste it. I liked it. Mm. Process in more cream if you think it can be absorbed, but better too little than too much. Let's add another tablespoon. A little bit more. Over there. Okay, I wanted to go above and beyond with this recipe today because, you know, it's we're only making these fish canals. We're basically done the canal mixture. So, you know, I want to make this into as a special video as any of the other ones I make. So why not go above and beyond? So she's always giving you options in this cookbook. You know, choose this or this. Well, the option today is between nutmeg or truffle and i was shopping at my store for all these ingredients and right in front of me was truffle and i had never seen it at that store before so i was like okay well hmm, maybe this is a sign pick it up have a good time splurge a little let's do it so yeah i picked up some truffle what this is is truffles soaking in this water salt solution here and uh it smells like truffle Good thing, I didn't buy a knockoff. Lo and behold, there's our truffle. First time ever cooking with the truffle. So I need one tablespoon worth of chopped truffle. And I got my tablespoon right beside me here. Like a glove. It's legit. It's kind of pointless to keep chopping that up if I'm just gonna be adding it into Steve here. Into the mix. Let's give it a whirl. Whew. 
Yeah, let's bring out my favorite pan. This is gonna be wide enough for what I need. She's saying a 12 inch skillet. Well, mine is 12 inches and it is a braising dish. I guess you could call it my skillet today. What do I gotta do with this? Okay, so for this next step, you can either use salted water or fish stock. And while I was shopping for my truffles, I saw the fish stock there and I was like, well, pick up some of that as well. And this isn't like, you know, this isn't gonna be the best fish stock you've ever had, but I mean, all we're doing is using it for poaching. So I think it will do the job quite nicely. Sorry, seafood stock. Yeah, same thing. Simmering that. So what we gotta do is quenelle the, quenelle, quenelle or quenelle? Yeah, anytime I'm watching like some sort of cooking show or something like that, I always hear someone say quenelle, quenelle. And uh, I looked it up today just to make sure, and I was surprised it's quenelle, quenelle. I guess you don't go qua, you go ka. Proper pronunciation is quenelle. There you have it, there you have it, I guess, hopefully. <laughs> so what I gotta do is make a canal shape out of my canal mixture. Now I am not good at this, but Julia has given me quite detailed instructions on how to do it, so let's get canal in. Very cold water, two dessert spoons. So with a wet spoon, take some of the mixture, transfer the spoon to your left hand, transfer the spoon to your left hand, Smooth the top of the paste with the inverted bowl of the second wet spoon. Okay, then we're gonna take the spoon and flip it upside down. Oh, you did it, you little son of a bitch. I think we got that covered. So yeah, we just quenelled, quenelled, whatever. This stock here is just barely simmering. You can't get it past that. I'm gonna take my first quenelle here and uh, just gently drop it in and you poach. And then we gotta rapidly canal the rest of this. Shoot. You round at the top with an inverted spoon and then you slip it underneath. And then we drop it in. She wants these canals all done at the same time so you can poach them at the same time, but I can't keep up with the demand. So the spoon's always gonna be dunked in cold water right before I start doing this. Oh, that's gonna be a good one, I think. So these are gonna double in size and they're finished when they can easily roll around in there. It's gonna take around 15, 20 minutes. Look at those roll. With my slotted spoon, let's remove the canals. Put them on a plate lined with paper towel. I think I owe you guys something here in terms of like a sauce because I can't just serve these on their own. I mean, they're great on their own, but it needs a little bit more, right? to make this like a full video, that's what I'm thinking. You can use one of these fine, rich, buttery sauces over here. We're gonna make this sauce right here, diapoise. And I should have all the ingredients I need to make this happen. Okay, what I gotta do, I transfer, oh, we're all friends here. I gotta transfer the canal over here into this buttered dish. Heat the oven up to 350. That's gonna be to heat up the canals when I'm ready to go. We're done with this thing. All right, it's go time. Let's make a sauce. Let's make a sauce. Diapoise, saucepan. Okay, just throw in two tablespoons of flour. Tablespoon and a half of butter. So let's get this over here. Bowl me. Thank you. Egg yolk. I had that left over from earlier. Quarter cup of cream blended together. Start with the butter and the flour. We cook that together until it starts to foam. Add in the three quarter cup of cooking liquid from the canal. This is just under half a cup of milk. Boil for one minute. Beat the hot sauce by droplets into the yolk and the cream. Yeah, be careful. You know what happens. Temper that. We're gonna return the mixture to the saucepan. <laughs> We're gonna bring it back to a boil for another minute. A little bit of salt, a couple of hoots of pepper, a couple of drops of lemon juice. Isn't it great that I have everything on hand? We're stirring and boiling for one minute. And let's strain it. 
So this is what the canal look like, right? So not a whole lot of color into them. In addition to that, that's what the sauce looks like, right? So the question is, how do we want to do this? I'm gonna go with this one. Let's start the sauce. The vacuumer is back, guys. And they are full force today. I guess that floor must be really filthy. Chopped up parsley to finish this sucker off. That's what I'm thinking. That ought to do it, I think. Order up. We have done some postmodern uh, plating here. Very influenced by my other series. Thomas Keller has taught me well. Shall we dig in? C'est bon. Superb. After devouring four fish and truffle canals, I'm standing here thinking to myself, A, you know, what have I become? I don't recognize myself anymore. Secondly, nutmeg would have been the wrong call. It's truffles all the way, baby. You see, the thing with me is it's never over until it's over. The great thing about these, it's like you're eating a freaking cloud. It's a souffle-like. Very light, very, uh, whoa, fluffy. Mm. Creamy with the fish, obviously, and then the truffle. It's just a treasure. That was the right decision right there to add that sauce. It's like a bechamel -y velouté kind of thing going on with a subtle hint of fish because of that poaching liquid, you know? I did not see that coming, but I enjoyed those way more than I ever thought I would. It's phenomenal. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. <laughs> the canal is a delicate triumph of French cooking. Well, clean it up, make another video.